And if you choose to dabble, the Holy Spirit will do a move on you that'll surprise you. And that move is I still abide by, baby. See, you wouldn't want to be here. He ain't going to compete. For as much as this people refuses the waters of Shiloh that go softly and rejoice in resin and Remelia's son. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong and mighty, even the king of Assyria, and all his glory. And he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks. And he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even the neck and the stretching out of the wings shall fill the breath of thy land, O Emmanuel. Associate yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces. And give ear, all ye of far countries. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Now that's a serious thing when God repeats something twice like that. That's a warning. See, a lot of us are associating ourselves with things that God is not happy with. And he's got a word for those, and he's got a word for his people. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, for God is with us. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand, and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people. Now, let me stop right there real quick and go back to that other verse. Take counsel together and it shall come to naught. Speak the word and it shall not stand for God is with us. Listen, a lot of us have people in our lives who are associated and affiliated with things that are not totally godly. And we have family members, friends, distant relatives, distant associates, people that that are turned off to us, that we're turned off to, whatever the case may be. And there are people that almost, the, the best way for me to just put it in street terms is they badmouth some of us. They say things that they hope come into our lives. They speak bad fortune. They, they speak almost, they're almost trying to curse us. And what God is saying, it ain't going to stand. Nothing they say against you is going to stand. You're in my hand. I'm in control. So don't worry about what they say. Don't worry about what they think. Don't worry about what little things they try to conjure up. Nobody can curse what God has blessed. You hear me? So for those of you who are worried and wondering if there are things coming against you in the spirit realm, no weapon formed against you will prosper. According to Isaiah 54, remember that no weapon formed against you will prosper. And when you start to see things happening in your life and you wonder if this is because so-and-so has done this or, or, or they're over there putting cat casting spells and curses, speak that word against it. Return back to sender in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Remember that. Don't receive. Don't ingest anything negative that anybody speaks against you. You're a child of the Most High King. You remember that. You are protected, but you must usurp the authority God gave you in Christ Jesus. Amen? Moving right along. For the Lord spake thus with me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom the people shall say a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread, and he shall be for a sanctuary. He'll be your covering, y'all, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples 
and I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? Mm. You know, let me stop there. It is almost, it, it's amazing, it's shocking to me how many of God's people are mingling themselves with the occult, with witchcraft. It amazes me that they don't see how diametrically opposed that is to the word of God, the ways of God, the standards of God. God considers all of that an abomination. Let me list them for you, for those of you who don't know. Witches, wizards, warlocks, mediums, psychic hotlines, astrology, yoga, there are so many things that we think are innocent. I know Christians who have gotten involved in crystals, gotten involved in, in new age movements, gotten mixed up in, in, in different types of odd doctrine that there's a little truth mixed in with a whole lot of lie. And they get caught up in some cultic false religion where they act like Jesus is the center, but he's not. And those things that talk about you are gods in yourself, no. I'm telling you, you got to be careful that this is the age of deception, y'all. And many born-again Christians, or those that think they are, are being deceived. You got to be careful. Um, I remember um, one of the things that I have seen from different people that I have counseled myself is there's a lot of ignorance. That's See, that's one of the reasons why you need to read God's word. God's word will shed a light on the darkness that comes with confusion, on the darkness that comes with the lies from the enemy. Satan is the father of lies. So when you sit there and you mingle yourself, a lot of people think yoga is okay. Well, there's Christian yoga. No, no. Anybody who has worked in the Hindu religion who has come to know Christ has had it revealed to them through the Holy Spirit that whatever position you take in yoga, whatever position, it is yoking yourself up with Hindu gods. And what does God say? Thou shalt have no other God before me. Mm. And we don't realize that's what we're doing. We're paying homage and yoking our spirits up with the demonic realm. Got to be careful. Now listen, the other thing I see people doing is they'll go to these stores and they'll buy oils, candles, fragrances, things that are meant to set an atmosphere in their home. They can make people fall in love with them, make people lust for them, make people give them money, make people do whatever they want to do. They want to get people to fall up under their power, under their spell. No, that's not of God. That is straight from hell. That's straight from the pit of hell. But it comes pretty. It comes real pretty. It smells good. It looks good. Sounds good. Yeah. But let me tell you, sweetheart, you're playing with the devil's little toys. That's what I call it. You're warming yourself by the devil's fire. You have to be very careful the things you dabble in. If you have friends, and I'm seeing this in my mind, if you have friends, you go to their home and you see things on their wall or on in their furniture, and they have things that have to do with the occult. They have little trinkets and little emblems that have little uh, gods on them or Buddhas or whatever you want to call these little things. 
and they got little shrines and they got a bunch of little candles with a bunch of little weird images. Exit stage left, baby. Just get on out of Dodge. I don't care how many other things, how many Bibles they got sitting around. You cannot mingle the two. So you have to be careful who you associate yourself with and who you yoke up with and what you yoke yourself up with. Because I'm going to tell you, the Holy Spirit is not going to cohabit. God says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And he's, he's a jealous God. So you have to know the Holy Spirit. It's, it's like expecting your wife. Listen to this, you guys. It's like expecting your wife to live in the house with you and your extramarital affair girlfriend. And y'all sleep in the bed together. You really think God is willing. See, we are his temple. I, 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 I'm seeing this so clearly. We are his temple. God abides in us. We are his temple, his house. Listen, he tabernacles with us, but he's not going to tabernacle with us and our other lover. Some of y'all think it's all right, but God ain't into adultery. And that is adultery. It's spiritual adultery. The same way you wouldn't expect your wife or those of you who have husbands, you wouldn't expect your husband to lay in the bed with you and your other lover. It ain't going to happen. God is not. And he's holy. He's kadistu holy, without defect. His holiness is unadulterated. Our holiness is totally tainted because we live in this stuff called flesh. But I'm telling you, you cannot expect God to cohabit. You cannot expect the Holy Spirit to live in a dwelling in a temple that's got other that's got other shrines and other idols in there. And whatever you dabble with in your life, whatever you put your hands to, touch not the unclean thing. Trust me, God is not going to dwell in you while you're playing with all that other stuff. It's an either or situation. You make the choice. And if you choose to dabble, the Holy Spirit will do a move on you that'll surprise you. Mm-hmm. And that move is I still abide by baby. See, you wouldn't want to be you. He ain't gonna compete. It's either or. Now, I don't know why I keep feeling pressed to stay on that subject. But see, a lot of you guys, you wink at each other's sins and you got friends that you've known for years or relatives that you've known for years. And you think, well, they mean well. Well, they don't really know the difference. Well, you tell them if they don't want to hear it, then get your heels to clicking, baby, because it's either or. Ain't no gray area with God when it comes to who you're going to worship, who you're going to walk with. Some of y'all, this is the sad part about the church. Some of y'all that have integrated yourself into God's system of doing things have decided that you really trust your little witchcraft, your little incantations, your little spells, your little books of, of white magic, all this law, the stuff you dabble in, you, the astrology, uh, all this mess. You trust that more than you trust God. Some of you will spend more time reading uh, what your sign is going to be for you, what today is going to be for those who are Capricorn or, or Cancer or, or, uh, or Sagittarius or Pisces. You're sitting there reading these, these newspaper articles. You're reading these, these uh, detailed descriptions of what your day is, is going to bring to you because because the moon rises over this and sets over that and the alignment of the, oh, come on. God says, shouldn't you be seeking after God? Oh, okay. So you got to be careful with that because you will end up opening the door for the Holy Spirit to make an exit. And you don't want the glory of God to, to depart from your life. You don't want his presence to leave you. But if you don't even know if he's there or not because you're so busy dabbling, 
That means you won't know the difference. See, if you don't have the spirit of God in you, nine times out of 10, you may not have God at all. You may not. I don't know. It may take a minute for you to get there. But you have to be careful what you dabble in. Some things you got to let go immediately. You can't play and tinker and toy and tamper. No. You're in dangerous. You know, it's, it's worse than building your house on the sand. Living in the occult is like building your house on quicksand. That's worse than building your house on sand. So you have to be very careful with that. All right, let's go on to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Oh, my goodness. And see, some of you don't realize, I can't get off of this. Some of you don't realize that some of those that are claiming to be born-again Christians are not. They're children of the devil presenting themselves as angels of light, making you feel like you're at the bottom of the barrel, making you feel like you don't have any connection with God, making you feel like everything is your fault. Satan is an accuser of the brethren. Remember that. So when people start pointing the finger at you and everything's your fault and you ain't about this and you ain't about that and and, and you're following a false religion and you're... And, you know, you don't know this and, and, and you're dumb and, and, and you've got shortcomings. And if it wasn't for you, my life would be better and all. No, 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 baby. No, no. In your spirit, Satan, talk to the hand, baby, because I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Moving right along. Next. Yeah. You don't pay that any attention. All right. Now, this is what we have to do as Christians. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Let me quote this other scripture. We want to be, we want to, Know Jesus in the fellowship, in the, how, how do we say it? In the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. And I'm going to tell you, being yoked with Jesus brings on persecution. So some of you who are being persecuted, don't lose heart. Don't use heart, baby. You're on the right side. And that's why you're being persecuted, because you're on the right side. And Satan hates you with a cruel hatred. But what Satan feels and thinks about you is neither here nor there. That's dung under your feet. Doesn't count. The only one you are to concern yourself with is what God says about you. As long as you got God in your life and you're striving to live for holiness and you're staying close to him, and you're feeding off of his word, building yourself up in the most holy faith, guess what, baby? Can't no monkey stop your show. God's got you. You're in his hands. He's in control, and he has the plans. He's going to work them out. Verse 2, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this world, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Sometimes we get it twisted, as the kids say. And we want to seek God, but at the same time we're trying to seek God, we're trying to please people. We're trying to appease, keep the peace. God said be a peacemaker. Don't make peace with the enemy. You don't have to do that. Don't waste your energy. Don't waste your time being distracted by everybody else's drama. Don't waste your time. That is not where God wants your energy to be spent. That's Satan's way of wearing out the saints and beating you down and sucking the life out of you. No, those distractions you do not need. Put your Holy Ghost blinders on and focus. 
focus on glory. You can't make it on your own. Focus on glory and keep singing Jesus songs. Oh, what joy to know that in him we're on top of the world. Focus, baby. Get your mind and your 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 energy and and your emotions off of the nonsense that's down in this world. Focus on glory. That's where your victory is. That's where your strength comes from. Not on people and their nonsense. Get it off of them. Let them wallow in the mud all they want. You stay clean. You stay away. You say, you know what? Your problem ain't mine. I'm out of here. My name is Wes. I'm out of that mess. And stay out of it. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Whatever you do, do all in the name of Jesus. Do all according to God's will. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partakers of the fruit. You have to partake. You have to participate. You have to be all involved with the things of God in order to reap the benefits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds even as to prison, so to speak. But the word of God is not bound. So no matter how you're suffering, no matter what penalty you have to pay for stuff you didn't even do wrong, God's word is not going to fail coming out of your mouth. God's word is not going to fail as you live up to his standards. Remember that. Verse 10, therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake. See, you're going to come up against opposition because you're striving to be in the master's use. You're striving to be a vessel of honor. And that's the problem in this world. This world wants darkness. It loves darkness. It thrives on darkness. It lusts for darkness. And you are diametrically opposed to the system of things down here. That's why this is not considered our home. We are pilgrims passing through, baby. Remember that. Mm, mm, mm. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. See, we have witnesses, not only the cloud of witnesses, but we have witnesses here on this earth. And they're watching us, how we go through stuff, how we deal with opposition, how we deal with conflict, how we deal with fear, how we deal with with, with, with problems, trials, and struggles. And guess what? It all redounds to giving glory to God or bringing shame, one or the other. Verse 11, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Okay, now what I want to say about that is, yeah, there are going to be times that that you believers, you real deals are going to be going through some stuff. And it's not of a fault of your own. It's because of the mark that's on your forehead, the mark of Christ. Some of you have the profession, but you don't have the possession. You profess that you're in Christ Jesus, but you don't possess his spirit, his power his authority, because you're not living a holy life. But for those of you who are doing your best with what little you have, you're not perfect. None of us are. We all fall short of the glory of God, but we are still pressing toward that mark of the prize of the high calling of God. And it is a high calling because it takes us to higher levels, to higher standards, where God is constantly raising the bar on our lives. 
We can't settle for third, fourth, and fifth best and relax and enjoy being at that level. That's not where God wants us to live. So that's where you have to make the choice. Where are you going to live? Who are you going to be connected to? Who are you going to be associated with? Who are people going to know you by? By the cares of this world? By the, the, the drama mamas? The, 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 the slapping pappies? You, I mean, what are you going to be caught up in? Or are you going to be wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in Jesus, in his holiness, in his love, in his purity, in his sincerity, his genuineness, his peace, the fruits of his Holy Spirit, the characteristics of God? Yeah, we have this treasure in earthen vessels and the earthen vessels have cracks. We leak. So we have to be filled every day with the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to tell you, it's the Holy Spirit that gives you the ability to live according to God's will. Our flesh cannot do it, y'all. So if you're trying to do it in your flesh, you're going to live a life of failure constantly. But if you're living in the Spirit, you'll have way more success. And God knows the difference. He knows what's in your heart. He knows what you really want. He knows why you come to church. He knows why you pray. He knows why you read that word. He knows. He knows where your hunger is. He knows what you're yearning for, what you're reaching for, what you're striving for. He knows. And he also knows the hypocrites that are in, have mingled themselves in the kingdom. He knows them as well. We may not know them. We may not spot them. But God knows. And you don't want to get to the end of days where he lines us up. And when you step up to him, he looks at you and says, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. See, that's the key most of us forget is that he, when he says, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See, we're either going to work at that progress of righteousness or we're going to work and put all our energy and all the sin we can get away with. He knows the difference, y'all. He knows the difference. So I challenge you to reach, to strive, to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. Don't reach down mm -hmm, and degrade yourself and settle for a life in the flesh. Settle for life with the dictates of the flesh. Don't reach for things below. Reach for everything that's above. Amen. And that way we shall reign with him. If we, I mean, we will reign with Christ here on earth and in heaven. I'm going to read verse 15 just so that you get that in your spirit. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I say that because many of us, that's the one area we neglect the most, is reading God's word, studying God's word, praying God's word. Sometimes your prayers are answered quicker when you pray God's word. Some of y'all can get rid of demons out of your life by quoting God's word against those demons. Jesus did all three. He rebuked them. He quoted God's word. You hear what I'm saying? He rebuked the devil. He quoted God's word. He commanded. He took authority. He obeyed God and did not obey the dictates of his flesh. And that's why he is our high priest. Follow his example, y'all. As they say, they coined the expression in Christendom, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? Mm -hmm. That's what we should do, and that's what we should say. We should mark the perfect man. Behold the upright, for the end of that man's way is peace. And what perfect man to follow other than Jesus Christ? Oh, my goodness. And anybody else who's following him, really following him. But stay away from those that are professing and not possessing. Stay away from them. They will inevitably 
contaminate you. You don't want that. See, sin is like gravity. You look at gravity's pull. And then I'm going to be done. I'm closing. It's my closing remark. When you have, when, when you lay on the ground, if you lay prostrate on the ground or on the bed or whatever, your whole body is given to gravity. You're at your lowest position. But if you rise and try to get on your feet, it takes a whole lot longer to get on your feet from laying prostrate on the ground on your back than it is to be sitting in a chair and just jump right up. It's It takes far less time, far less effort. Why? Because when you're laying, when your whole body is given to the gravity, you're fighting all the forces of gravity. So the weight is heavier on you to try to jump up onto your feet. You're fighting more forces to get up. Well, it's the same thing walking with the Lord. The lower your ebb, the lower the range of your reach, the harder it is to rise to God's to rise to God in his standards. When you are sitting up and you're ready and you're you're ready to stand and you're sitting up taking in his word, giving yourself strength. When it's time when he says make a stand, you can make a stand in 2 seconds flat. It doesn't take long to make that stand. Why? Because you're in position, you're ready. You're fighting the forces of gravity and it's much easier because you're already in an upright position. Live an upright life, y'all. No matter what your friends are doing, you live an upright life. And you will be all right. Because God will take very good care of you. It's not in the highest grade. It's not in winning brownie points. It's in pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. Without compromise. Amen? All right. God bless you. Be encouraged. Remember, we are able to do exceedingly. We are able, I'm sorry, I want to say the other scripture. We are able, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Whatever it is we have to reach toward. Whatever it is we have to rise to. With the help of the Holy Spirit, the help of our Father in heaven, through Christ, we have the authority and the ability to overcome the pull of sin's gravity. And we can rise higher than we normally could in our own flesh because of the supernatural help that's been given to us. God bless you and know that you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you, and no weapon formed against you will prosper. And for those of you who don't know where you stand, go back to the manufacturer, stand in front of him, let him do an assessment, and then you ask him to give you godly sorrow if you know you have stepping. And then fully repent. God bless you.